everybody. <laughs> so tonight's episode is about moms. And while Sherry Nine is sharing us in our Caribbean Edge Facebook, I'm going to go ahead and read a quote because I think it's so befitting to start tonight's episode. Happy Mother's Day to the love of my life. I could not be a luckier man to be married to you. Our girls could not have had a better mom and they couldn't have asked for a better example every single day. And when I decided to ask you to marry me, I wasn't sure you'd say yes, but I also didn't know where we'd be going in our lives. I just knew I wanted to go there with you. You've Beautiful. written the, extra, the Extraordinary Book filling up arenas, but most importantly, you've shown yourself through your honesty, your fearlessness, and insight to be a great advocate for people who needed it. Help inspire people to find their own voices. So happy, pretty proud of you, girl, President Obama. That was his message on Valentine's <laughs> Day, I mean Mother's Day, to his wife, Michelle. So thank you for that inspirational oh. quote. <laughs> Great way to start tonight's episode Beautiful. about mothers, right? Beautiful. How was your mother's day? Oh my God, it was so nice and lazy. It breakfast was just in nice bed. and lazy. You know, we were thinking breakfast in bed, but Sydney was like, well, you know, it's already like close to three o'clock and the game is on. We might want to watch the game outside on the TV. I'm like, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I am coming. Sports I get that. Fanatic. Yeah. yeah. So it was perfect. It was sports, all sports. Yeah. We watched football in bed before getting up. Um, and then it was just sports, food, drink. She and I finished two bottles of champagne. Oh, wow. During the course of the day. Yep. All through the whole day, straight up to the next foot basketball game at night. Yeah. Awesome. Relaxing. Day. Yeah. 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 Hobby was there with us. My son came in and out, in and out, in and out. Mm. Nice. Perfect. So I worked on Mother's Day. <laughs> I work because of what we do in healthcare, and one of my employees, it was just easier for her to go into the office because she was on call. And I, I was the on call manager, so I went in and worked with her. My daughter Jade, who came in from college, also came in. So she worked with her mom on Mother's Day helping out. And then we came home at a beautiful crab dinner. So Mother's Day crab? didn't. Yeah. Nice. Crab dinner. Nice. Um, so Mother's Day didn't go as planned because I also planned to visit a couple of people, but it didn't turn out that way. So we're going to have another Mother's Day, another day. Um, to celebrate with As my adopted mom, right. so to speak, and, and my BFF, so yeah. Yeah, you said that um, we, sometimes we go out for Mother's Day, but we never go out on Mother's Day because we yeah. can't handle the crowd. I always tell them I would rather go out on a different day and we all go out for dinner, whatever it is, lunch, brunch, coffee, tea, whatever it is, let's do it on a different day yeah. because I can't handle the crowd. So for all the mothers out there, we hope you had a great Mother's Day, whether you worked or let didn't Let us know work. what you did. Send us I a know, comment. Let, us, let know. us know what you did, if, if you liked it, if it was sucky. Yeah, <laughs> if it's just typical where moms have to work. We have so many nurses, police officers, um, doctors that are working. Mm -hmm. um, or you have your own business, you still have to work. So either way, we have a day dedicated as mothers. And for all the fathers that play that dual role, we can't forget about them as well. But we figured it was a really, really good time to talk about moms, the challenges, our fears, what we've learned, what can we share with young moms or future moms and advice for our own children that they may or may not follow. So, first, fathers. fathers. I like, I like how you introduced all of the rest of the topics with that one, whether or not fathers are actually playing that dual role. Absolutely. And I was telling Ray <laughs> and Christina, they, they're here with us on the show, guys, but they're behind the scenes. <laughs> I was telling them about the fact that I, I, I swear to God, I fell in love with my husband when he was a father, when I saw him fathering our children. Yeah. I fell in love with him even more, and I was like, <laughs> I'm in deep. I'm in deep. Because as a young mother, I think I was too young. 
If any one of you guys thought you were too young when you had children, I'm pretty sure some of you feel that way. I know I was too young. I was 24 years old with my first baby. What did I know? What did I know? And he was, granted, he's a, he's a few years older than I am, and he jumped in like, oh my God. He, was, he did everything. I was scared to bathe my babies because they were so young, and my husband did it every day he bathed them with not a fear in the world, with so much care. So, shout out to the fathers. <laughs> Absolutely. Shout Way out to, to the go, fathers. Way to go, Stuart, for yeah. stepping up to the plate. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of dads don't. Yeah. And a lot of moms don't as yeah. well. And yeah. I share a similar experience with my daughter's dad, where he was hands-on. He still is with oh, Jay. nice. Just a really, really good father, good even though we've gone our separate ways, right. which a lot of parents do. Uh, eventually, he's still been a great dad and a support system to Anthony, my, mm -hmm. my son as well. Mm -hmm. um, opposite, you know, I have both experiences, the good and the bad, right. um, where one father steps up and the other one doesn't. But you don't know when you make those choices. You know what you know at the time so to speak exactly so yes so one of the things we want to talk about today is and someone made a post on Facebook is do moms look different now versus years and years ago and there are pictures which um, depict the moms as the rollers in the hair the house dress um, I personally think moms look super hot these days, like mom, including us, we're hot moms, yeah. So I think we're taking <laughs> care of ourselves. Um, we can go out there and rock a, a, a crop top and some jeans, and yet we have kids. So um, I think for the moms that are sexy and hot and confident, I, I really like seeing that. What about you? I like seeing it too. And it is different. It's definitely different from the moms that were back then compared mm -hmm. to the moms now. Even hell, even grandmas. I know. There's hot even grandmas. Even grandmas, yeah. I know. Working even grandmas. Out, isn't I can't wait to become a grandma. I, I really can't. I can't wait, but I know that my kids are not ready. But I really, I really yeah. want. I'm looking forward to being a grandma too, but my kids are not ready. Right. And I'm not ready for them to be ready. ready. <laughs> but I'm looking forward yeah. to being a hot grandma. Yeah, I'm kind of being selfish here. Yeah. I'm like, you know yeah, what, get on with it. it. I want it. But, but not like overly impatient, but, yeah. but I'm ready. Looking forward to I'm very it. much ready. <laughs> now, another question someone asked us is, can you be your kid's best friend? And we want to hear from our viewers too. Are you best friends with your kids? I think it depends on the phase of, 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 the, of the relationship. I mean, I think you could probably get to best friends when your child becomes an adult, like a full-grown adult, like married, probably, probably not married, but at least had some children to experience what that really is, for them to be able to meet you on that level that you are. Um, because of that mother daughter son or a father daughter son relationship where where you're always guiding you're always wanting what's best you're always 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 fearful of what might and could happen i think the responsibility is overwhelming and sometimes it gets it, it can get in the way of, of a friendship that you can possibly yeah. have with your child of course I think I agree with that. I think as my kids have gotten older, I find that our our bond, even though we've always had a bond, it's at a different level now. It's a more trusting level, more, uh, we communicate a lot more, they tell me more, even though I'm sure they have their secrets. But I find that they're able to confide in me more, ask me for advice. And I think some of that is how you're raising your children, the confidence that you're putting into them, um, the respect that you give them. And I, I think for me, being an island mom as well, and the way I was raised, um, which was very strict, um, I had to change my mindset you know, in a lot of ways because I didn't want to raise my kids the same way. They're growing up in a different country. So I'm at a very comfortable level with my children. And there are times I want to be on the edge of that best friend title, but at the same time, I want my kids to know 
I'm their mom. And I've had that conversation with my daughter um, because I didn't like the way she answered me one day and she was away in college. And I said to her, I'm not your best friend. I am your mom and I need you to understand that. So it's that comfort level, yes, we, I want it from the fact that we can communicate, respect each other, she can confide in me, trust my decisions, and I can trust hers as well, mutually, but at the same time, I am your mom, and you're gonna respect that um, because I'm not your friend. So tell us how you feel about you know being your kid's best friend, but I wanna also think that I am her best friend to a level that she can confide in me with things she may or may not discuss with her friends as well. Okay. No, I get it. I totally get that. Um, <clears throat> when, whenever any one of them, my children, have to talk to me about anything, they can and they know that, but I am always the type of mother to just kind of throw something in there that's just overly protective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I know, I know, I know that, you know, at times they would probably really rather if I don't. <laughs> And I always say to them, what kind of mother would I be if I did not say Absolutely. that? If I don't communicate these things to you, what kind of mother would I be? And I try to get them to understand. I think they do. I Even though they, they may not acknowledge it yeah. all the time, they definitely yeah. do. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. What are some of the joys, the challenges, and the fears that we've experienced as moms? <laughs> we want to know what you're saying about these um a fear i think for me was leaving my kids at daycare they were so little so young i remember crying like most moms do because you don't think anyone can take care of your kids the way you do <laughs> I wasn't born rich, so I couldn't stay home <laughs> um, with the kids. So I think that daily fear and letting go and realizing that it's okay and putting, putting them in the best environment I could possibly leave them in. And we all know, regardless if you think it's the best as far as what the school offers, you're still taking a risk because you think of all the Catholic churches that we've left kids at and, and they've been molested or different hard issues, but How just making you find that yours? right decisions. Um, word of mouth, I started out in the Caribbean um, schooling because it's so strict and I think you see less, it was the educational piece that I leaned towards and then I knew they were disciplined and very structured. So I was very comfortable in that setting initially, um, but leaving the kids were still a, a hard thing for me. Um, and then as they grew, it was just, you know, I, you know, for the most part, I've lived in uh, middle class neighborhoods where the school system um, has been good based on the grades. I mean, any where you go, you're taking a risk, but it was the best decisions at the time, and thankfully, as far as I know, it was the right decision for that. Obviously, both kids were doing well, and it's always, for me, that open communication with my kids because you're the best resource for your kids to be able to trust you as they grow older. So some of the fears of can my child be abused? I think if my kids were in, well, they're in school now, but one of the fears is with all the school shootings, you know, are our kids safe every day when they go to school? You just don't know. So those are fears, real fears that I have as a mom. What about you? Any you can think of? <clears throat> A face as a mom? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start, right? <laughs> Everybody tells me, you know, you your kids are grown now. You don't have anything to worry about. You have freedom. You have. I'm like, I've got big people problems. My kids are big people, so now I have big people problems. When they were small people, I had small people problems. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, I kind of like the small people problems because I had some sort of control. 
Yeah. I had some sort of really, um, I had a, I had the upper hand. Yeah. <laughs> I no longer have the upper hand. And I just pray that they listen to what I have to say each and every day, even though it might be the very same thing that they're hearing over and over again. Um, but yeah, 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 it's never over. Being a mom is never over. Being a dad is never over. As long as, it, it, I mean, as long as you are living, it's not over. So it's, my fears are like when they leave the house. Period. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Once they leave the house, I become fearful. I, I know that anything could happen. And then I tell myself, what I tell myself that allows me to let it go is I, I have that saying, let go and let God. Absolutely. So it's basically, that's the only thing that calms me down. <laughs> That's the only thing that calms me down. It's like let go, let God. It's in God's hands. If 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 whatever it is that that is happening or is going to happen, it's because it is supposed to, to happen. happen. And I tell myself that daily, daily, yeah. daily. That's a good way. I, mm -hmm. I do that as well yeah. to comfort myself. I have to. What do you guys do? What we want to hear? What do you do <laughs> in situations like this? Because I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. Well, some of the joys, let's talk about that. The joys for me is watching my kids succeed. Um, you know, for Jade getting a scholarship and going off, I didn't want her to go off to New York, but that was just her journey at the time. Um, but just watching her volleyball success, um, being a state championship was a great accomplishment. Um, going off to college and being able to pay for that through her talent like many college students who earn their way um, for, you know, saving parents thousands of dollars or coming out with bills that are so significantly high to pay. And then with Anthony, just being proud of him. Here's a kid that put himself through college and without a single bill, with just working and paying his way from, to school. It took him a little longer, but just him doing that. And I think I'm just proud of how respectful they are. Jay's a little on the stubborn side, but you know, still <laughs> respectful and and just giving back. You know, Jade volunteers a lot of her time naturally without me even asking. So it's just a proud of the children and the young adults that they become is, is just the joy mm -hmm. of having that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the joy is for me basically the same. I mean just how um how caring they are yeah. i remember i i fell in love with my husband because of that how caring he was he, oh. his heart is like huge like wide open wide open to anybody and this is exactly how my children are yeah yeah so that's awesome. big hearts big yeah. hearts very open um very very caring very, very caring, very thoughtful, understanding. And I'm like, wow, this is so nice to see whenever I spend time with them and when I see them with, with um, people around them and the way, the way, the way they're so um, thoughtful and respectful, I am like, wow, this is great. This is great. And I, and I tell them all the time, I mean, guys, life is a big circle. How you treat people is going to come right back around. Oh. I've preached it to them from the very beginning, mm. from the very beginning. I mean, they tell me all the time, mom, you talk to everybody, you talk to everybody. I'm like, I can't help it. Like, <laughs> people are, you know, people like, people like a good smile. I said, when you smile, they smile back, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. When you smile, they smile back. And that's like a whole open line to conversations and, and learning and growing because storytelling come, becomes involved and people open your eyes. People open your eyes a lot to a lot of the things that, that are unseen to you at the time. That and someone unseen. watching me say, people don't smile back, but they do for the most part. They do. I mean, there are probably a few miserable exceptions My to exceptions, it, yeah. But then at least you smiled with them, and yes. that's what matters, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Is being a mom more complicated than a dad? 
I asked a male friend of mine, <laughs> I asked a male friend of mine before coming on the show, and I asked him, do you think that moms are uh, um, a better parent than dads? I asked him because I knew he would be very fair with his answer. He's very much like that, you know, open, straight up. And he said to me, he actually admitted <laughs> that he thinks moms are better parents. And he's a great freaking parent. Wow. So I was surprised that he said that. I was very surprised. He said, but I'm not saying he did disclaim. He had a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not saying that dads are not good parents because there are dads that are great parents. But he said to me, there is that thing that they say mom's instinct and mom's intuition. He's like, I believe that that is very true, very real. I've seen it with my children, he said. I've seen it with their mothers. I'm like, okay, wow. So we definitely need to hear from the dad yeah. on how you true. feel about that yeah. as well. Yeah. And I, I think I tend to agree with it to Ten some two. degree. Yeah. yeah, I had to agree with it. Yeah, um, but another side to that too, because I have a boy and a girl, and I raised, you know, pretty much as a single mom, but at the end of the day, um, there are times when I wish there was a male figure to take my son under the umbrella. That's, excuse me, it says broadcast interrupted. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we can. So just to put my, um, you know, so I, I think sometimes, even though not discussed, my son may have benefited a little bit from that, not sure. Okay, thank you for that. Sorry for the slight interruption there. Looks like we lost connection for a little bit. We might have lost you guys for a minute. Um, we're trying to sort it out. <laughs> Make sure <laughs> if we anybody can even hear me at this time. I think oh. we got thumbs up from Christina. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank Sorry you. about that, guys. <laughs> Oops. So we were agreeing that we think moms may, because of how we are as mom, which is motherly, compassionate, and probably a little more attentive, even though you have dads, so we're just generalizing <laughs> here, um, but that moms may be um, more attentive to kids and, and more in tune and what your friend said, right. <laughs> right. which was well put. So yes. thank you, but we want to hear from the dads as well. And some of the moms may have yeah, a different like, opinion yes, exactly, that as well. Exactly, because we've all raised our children with our significant others, some without, but we can have, I'm pretty sure I want to hear what everybody has to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, speaking of moms, not everybody, and we said this, has um, the opportunity to have their mom. Like I know you posted your picture with your mom and um, a lot of people for Mother's Day were on social media thanking their moms, the best mom ever, um, how fabulous their moms were. So we know a lot of moms have passed away and so we know there are a lot of people that are impacted by that, especially on Mother's Day. So, you know, our thoughts, you know, are definitely with you because I think it can be a little challenging for someone that's missing their mom, especially when everyone else is celebrating their moms. I actually um, had a conversation with Jay because I was reading everything on, on Facebook and I said to her, wow, there's so, all these beautiful comments about mom as and I don't have a mom to say happy Mother's Day to. No. And she's like, well, is your mom still alive? And I said, yeah, she is alive. However, we're not in touch with each other. Um, and she's like, well, maybe you should <laughs> be in touch with her. And I said, no, our situation, you know, it just doesn't allow us to be there at this point. Um, so the point is for all the people that Mother's Day probably impacted them a lot differently where they didn't have that mom in their life or they had them for a period of time and they didn't, there are people that have been adopted, for example, and they may have a biological mom as well as a mom that stepped up to the plate and raised them. So there's so many different moms, moms out there. I know for me, 
you know, Paula Haas's mom, um, she's like a mom to me now, um, pretty much. When, what time are you coming over for dinner? So if I'm gonna celebrate Mother's Day, it would have been with them if I hadn't worked. So there are a lot of our viewers that may be in similar situations. So know that we understand that as well and hope that however you spent Mother's Day with your mom or celebrating your mom, that you, you had a beautiful day off as well, whether you worked or not. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. very, very tough. I know it can be. I mean, I have friends that have lost their moms and, um, and we're thinking about you. We're definitely thinking about you. Yeah, I'm just checking in here to see if we have any viewer comments to tell us what you think of the conversation so far. Um, thanks, Trisha, for letting us know you can hear us again. <laughs> thanks, Trish. <laughs> um, let's see. Marlon says, um, thanks for tuning in, Marlon. In terms of parenting, I believe moms are um, need more than dad. So I think he means that they're indeed more on hands than moms are. Um, let's see. So Marlon is saying that we are more hands on than they are? I think that's generally. what his message meant. Oh, I, I think generally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And then Michelle Hussein from Atlanta. Welcome again, Michelle. Ladies, I'm having all kind of anxiety right now as graduation is two weeks away and coming to grips letting go because he's off to college come August. Oh, yeah. Mind Michelle. you, everyone, it's an hour away. So, Michelle, you're in a better know, situation still, than me. So we definitely feel that, except Jade is a plane ride to New York away, which... God. You have to take into account the cost of that, and it's not just a drive away. But congratulations that he's doing you proud and is going off to college. And yes, we feel that pain and the tears that will come. But then the joy to that side of it is knowing that he is doing you proud and becoming the young man you should. Right? Let's see. Michelle, I feel your pain. I would be the same way. And I would so be the same way. And then Ray said, thank you, Ray. As the child gets older, how is the relationship between both parents and child affected when it comes to discipline? Wow. So did you impact the, um, did your discipline change from being a young child to an adult? Or older child. It's a good question. It ha it had to. It had to because I'm dealing with adults now. I'm not no longer dealing with children. Yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> tell them to come home when the street lights are on. <laughs> I can't. So yes, the discipline is definitely one that is full of change. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I've I don't beat my kids. I didn't. It's not a form of discipline that. I use. Um, I believe communication, respect all go a long way. That's not to say I won't punish my children. It's different. It's not to say, you know, I used to pinch them um, and nothing hard either. But I just found that the methods I used for my children worked. I'll never believe in you beating your kids um, and abusing your children. Um, so as kids, I didn't do it, definitely not as adults. And like you said, you know, at this point, they're doing us proud and living their lives. So discipline definitely will change throughout the years. I hope if people did discipline with beating their kids as they get older, there's a point where you can't beat your kids anymore. And I was disciplined through beatings. <clears throat> so obviously as I got older, and moved out and started my own personal journey, those beatings stopped. Yeah, so it definitely does change. Great question, Ray. It does, um, it has to. <laughs> and we thank everyone for tuning in. I'm just scanning through the, um, the, the comments here. Michelle said, Glamma, 
for our grandmas <laughs> out there, the hot mamas. Yep. Um, Joan, thanks for tuning in, Joan. Um, true words, not friends until they're older. Don't tell them everything for sure. And that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, it's and we're used to that in the mm -hmm. islands where this is big people conversation. Mm -hmm. um, leave the room. And there are certain things your kids shouldn't know. And I think what comes to mind when I read that as well is if the parents are going their separate ways and you drag the kids into it or you say things on the phone and your kids can overhear. Kids hear everything. Mm -hmm. Even when you think they're not listening, they're mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you say something, even though you're probably correct, what they are overhearing makes you look bad because they overhear it. So that's one advice I would give to younger people. If you and that person don't make out, you know, the best thing you can do, the quicker you guys can resolve those personal issues, the better it is for you both health as adults, for your health, and then more importantly for your children. So making decisions and putting your children first mm -hmm. is what I would say is advice I'd give to young parents coming up. I've definitely put my children first. No regrets whatsoever, um, but I didn't think I would. I, I saw mommy do it and I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna live my life for my children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, she's given her life. My mother has given her entire life to us. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that either. That's a great point. Yes. I found a balance. Mm -hmm. I think I found a balance mm -hmm. because I am not one. To, when, you, when your kids leave the nest, and Michelle Hassan kind of tipped on this with her son leaving, I think it was so important that when your kids are around you still have a life you're still doing something so my kids kind of got independent of it I didn't abandon them I don't want you to think that but I was there for them in every single way but I still had a life you know for the times when they're young no one babysat my kids unless they were in school so those were the years that I dedicated to that one-on-one -on -one with my kids as they got older I also knew I need to balance my personal life as well and have my space. So as they transitioned into their own lives, everyone lives so independently. We we're kind of like a sports house. Like Jade was off doing volleyball. I was doing volleyball. AJ was doing basketball. And so we all did what we like and we still do. So I'm not that dependent on my kids, even though they're dependent on me to some a lot of ways as well. So great points mm -hmm. there. I think um, you might go through the phases of that as well. Yeah. You might go through a few years of being totally codependent on one another and then a few years out totally out of it. Absolutely. Like done and yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Stu say hi there mothers. They talked about you a lot today, Stu, how <laughs> super of a husband and father you've been. <laughs> so thank you for being an awesome dad. It's so important. Um, to set that example because you're being an awesome dad is showing your daughter what she needs to expect of yeah. course she has high and your son mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. and your son yeah and, and, and he'd be a good dad he'd be absolutely. a really good dad oh i remember God. jade's dad even though we were separate would show up at the door with valentine gifts for his daughter mm -hmm. i mean he made sure every valentine she was recognized so for all the dads stepping up i think it's really important i'm showing you and if you don't have that in your life know that it exists and set your boundaries yourself mm -hmm. as well like mm -hmm. we all have to mm -hmm. if we think we missed out on something mm -hmm. um hi trisha greetings to you as well hi trish which Trisha is this? <laughs> Trisha Chung Foster. Ah, Always a pleasure. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, Gabby, thanks for joining us. I agree with Dawn. A child should know their place. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some island talk right there. Yeah. Um, and it goes a long way. I think what our parents thought we should know our place with, you end up finding out anyway. <laughs> so just having that you know, conversations with your kids and what to have, not to have is so important as well. Communication. Again, Absolutely. It's all it boils down to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what was your favorite phase of motherhood? If you had to pick one. 
<laughs> wow, that's a tough one. I know. I think I think watching them grow, like like twos, threes, like asking all the questions, you see the curiosity that's just flying out of them, every question they have, mm -hmm. everything that they do, you know, it's all about curiosity. Honestly, I wish I had that face back. Oh, I wish I had that face back. And I think that's why I say I can't wait for grandchildren. I know. Yeah. I feel it too, because yeah. where I work now, Bethel Bethlehem School is right in that plaza. And I see all the parents dropping off their little ones in their uniforms. Right. And I'm just like, wow, I remember and love that face so much. Yeah. I don't know if I have a favorite face. Right. I love the baby stage, not yeah. the change the in diet. I, I love the smell of the, the newborn. Smell. I remember when I brought Sean home, I couldn't stop smelling him. Sydney, same thing. I just couldn't stop smelling them up. I <laughs> couldn't stop it. So I do, I, I loved that a yeah. lot. Yeah. I love the baby stages. Mm -hmm. I love, not the crying. <laughs> teething all of that but just watch i think toddler stage yeah, was, um, like was awesome yeah. and then i i just i mean i'm so in love with the stage that i'm in now with my kids yeah just having one-on-one -on -one yeah, conversations nice. yeah. um i don't think they worry about telling me anything these days which is a great stage to be with your kids if you can ever get there because i never had it with my my dad um yeah never had it with to my that mom and dad open either. conversation never had it with my mom and dad so i think that's why this stage is so refreshing for me to be able to have broken the cycle so to speak with my own journey and having it with my kids now but i've loved every single stage yeah for my children yeah. and looking forward to the grandchildren too yeah so, if you have a favorite um, stage of your kid's life, if you have any feedback, comments about fears, joys, challenges, advice for young moms. Advice. Your we'll child. take advice. Anyone yeah. who has um, children that are adults. <laughs> I know. Just, just make your comments for this episode to your friends. We want to hear from you, Cheryl and I, and I definitely go back in, as you know, read your comments, respond to them, because we definitely appreciate you. We, we don't know it all. I was <laughs> just gonna say we are not experts, but by sharing our stories, you might learn something, just like when you guys share your stories. I learn, I definitely learn. Yeah, we yeah. learn from each other. I mean, the comments you guys make, the questions you ask, your journey is important. Mm -hmm. Um, we all do things differently, like you said, yes. learn from each other yeah. what works for you, what doesn't work, and what works for one child may not work, but it's the fact that we're having these conversations, right. these healthy conversations, that yeah. makes a difference. And we have some great upcoming shows for you, some great guests that are coming on, and I won't ruin the surprise by telling you who or what next topic But next week we do have a guest. <laughs> I will say that one. Get ready. Just in case you guys are bored of Dawn bored. and I. I mean, but just in case, you never know. We're bringing on another chick on the, on the show. Another, another, another chick. chick mm. Another female. I'll give you that hint. She's it's a female. <laughs> awesome. So we have some very important conversations lined up. So always stay tuned to the Caribbean Edge because we definitely appreciate you. And we look forward for our guests next week. And we look forward to all of your comments. We want you guys to remember to share us with everybody that you know. I know. <laughs> share our Facebook page, our Instagram, our YouTube link, our channel. And remember the reggae girls are in town this month. So stay tuned for more information on the reggae girls who are doing Jamaica and the Caribbean proud as representing us in football or soccer, however you may represent it. Check our page. We're going to have more information on that for you guys. Yes. So keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Caribbean Edge. Have a beautiful night. Thank you very much, guys, for everything, for keeping us company tonight. And um, don't forget to share your stories with us. We want to know.
We want to know. We really want to know. We want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao for now. Take care. Bye. Bye.